I've always been a little bit intimidated by the mission of Thayer, which is carved on Cummings Hall. It's also in your brochure. It's to prepare the most capable and faithful for the most responsible positions and the most difficult service. If that's not fair warning that there are no guts or easy A's to be found in that building, I don't know what would be. Uh, congratulations to all of you on completing that preparation. But is engineering really the most difficult service and the most responsible positions? I think so. I know from building an internet company and uh, working at Sun Microsystems, the superior engineering breeds superior economic returns. At Internet Brands, it was the ability of our engineers to build systems that would scale by many orders of magnitude that allowed our company to grow and to do so in a light, fast way and keep costs under control. At Sun Microsystems, the link between better engineering and more profitability couldn't have been clearer. Uh, good ideas breed demand for the product, and the degree to which those ideas were proprietary to Sun determined the profitability of those products for Sun. So indeed, in Silicon Valley, the engineers are kings. It may have been the beginning of the end for Detroit when power shifted from the engineers to the financial whiz kids. And certainly there are many today in the oil industry who are resolved to better heed engineers' advice going forward. <laughs> Set aside the base pursuit of filthy lucre, engineering is central to better societies. Drinking water, food, infrastructure, communications are all available to many more people today than imagined only a generation before because of engineering accomplishments. Yet, somebody needs to lead and organize the engineers to deliver these things. In fact, the most responsible positions and most demanding service may lie in orchestrating the uh, contributions and achievements of individuals. Fortunately, the Thayer School has prepared you well to do this. Um, a study by the uh, website Daily Beast, found that Dartmouth produces pound for pound more CEOs of technology companies than any other school. A tracking study of Thayer alumni, since I guess the beginning of time, found that one in nine, and for you non-engineers that's more than 10%, uh, <laughs> of Thayer graduates have gone on to reach the C level, meaning chief executive officer, chief operating officer, chief technology officer in business. How does Thayer do this? I see three key ingredients in your preparation. Math, systems, and people. First, the math. Now, it may not be glamorous, but it's fundamental to the truth. And it does create a tough screen. You have earned your spurs with the wave equation, the heat equation, and other partial differential equations, both bounded and unbounded. These are not easy things. And to the rest of the world, it's a signal of smart, or as Sylvanus Thayer might say, uh, capable and faithful. Um, second, take a systems approach, and this is more distinctive to Thayer. Most engineering schools have chemical, electrical, mechanical, and other engineering departments uh, instead of a unified approach. The intellectual agility that comes from seeing commonalities across systems and thinking in an interdisciplinary way will serve you well in your career. When my favorite engineer of all time, my dad, retired after a 43-year career as a chemical engineer, I asked him, if you had to do all over again, would you be a chemical engineer? And he startled me when he said no. Okay, what then? Ski patrolman, llama rancher, pilot? Uh, no, he really wished he'd been an electrical engineer. But by the time he had enough, uh, or by the time he discovered that, he had too many credits in chemistry to switch. It's too bad he didn't go to Thayer. Um, the training that you have from Thayer will give you flexibility and will give you insights and approaches that are, I think, better than those who are more narrowly trained. And finally, number three, consider the humans. Technical solutions have to work in the real world of messy human behavior. Fortunately, your Thayer training stands on top of or is in the context of a Dartmouth liberal arts degree, which includes healthy doses of the humanities and social sciences. Also, Dartmouth engineers are very well-rounded people. When I met uh, with a sample of engineering majors, I asked, how many of you uh, play a sport? It was about half of the people in the room. How many of you are in a fraternity or sorority? Again, it was about half. How many of you are active in the arts? And that was about a third. There are very few, if any, 
effective leaders who are one-dimensional. And I think there are very few, if any, one-dimensional engineers getting a degree from Dartmouth tomorrow. So, congratulations to you, the capable, capable and faithful, on your preparation for the most responsible positions and the most difficult service. The world needs you. We need your specific innovations, some of which I believe we will be celebrating today. We need your leadership of other innovators, and we need your thinking about the world's problems, both technical and not. Thank you.